All right, so I wanted to give an update on the biogas here. So it's been getting cooler at night lately. Um, even one night below freezing. So right now I've got an extension cord running out to the system. And we have, basically it's just an aquarium heater, water heater. Um, and there's a convenient location here for that. You can stick it, look at that, you can see the steam coming out of there. Um, so that means it's working, but yeah, it's way, it's way down in there, um, having trouble trying to get it out. So yeah, there's an aquarium heater. There's the top of it there. Um, I've got it set to 90, but, um, cause that's probably how you usually how hot it is in the summer, um, when the sun's beating down on it. So you want to keep it nice and warm for that bacteria to keep working. Otherwise, if it gets too cold, the bacteria will stop breaking stuff down. Um, so during the day, I'll unplug it because it gets a little warmer and the sun beats down on it. But at nighttime, I definitely like to plug it in because it gets it gets too cold um, at this time of the year. So that's just an update to kind of show you what we do for the winter time, colder time out. So um, it's still producing. It seems like it's kind of slowed down a little bit, but. Um, it's still, you can see there's still some in there. But uh, we'll keep using the heater throughout the, the colder months and see how it does. So there you go. So um, he did put the thermometer in here and you wanna make sure that there's something that's you know covering your plug so that it doesn't uh, break or anything like that. So this is like a paint, a paint can holder. Paint roller. Paint roller holder and um, he stopped used, closing and working. Yeah, so we recycled it and it, we used it for this and it works really well. So you can even do a PVC pipe with like a big hole. So I wanted to make a video to show you what it looks like when the biogas system is running out of gas. So right now the dial is on high and it's not as full. The fire is not as full and the fire is not as high as it would be. And um, I could tell that the pot is not even getting hot anymore either. I'm trying to cook my capers and it's not as hot as it would be when um, the gas system is full. So when the gas runs out, the fire sputters and also you could see that the system is flat. Um, also, the another reason why the fire sputters is because there's water in the tube. Uh, condensation just gets collected in that tube and I'll show you in the next video how to get rid of that. So right here you could see that there's almost no more fire and it's gone. Um, so you want to make sure that you do turn off the dial when um, that happens because you don't want to keep that on so that the, the gas doesn't escape and you can see that the system is flat right there. So that's how you know. I think there's more condensation in the line. You can see the flame is sputtery. It's not smooth and constant. So we're going to go check the line. Okay. So, got to turn off the gas first with this little valve here because we don't want it to, you know, come out here. So all you got to do is unscrew this down. So I just want to lift up the pipe here and just try to... There it goes. Yep. Decent amount of water. Probably all kind of built up like down here where it kind of, you know, it comes down. So all that gas is trying to pass through the water and it's, and it's you know, sputtery. So turn the gas back on here. All right. So I don't know, it's still kind of sputtery there. So maybe there's still more water in the line that didn't come out, but looks a little better. It still is. Looks a little better, but I'll uh, keep troubleshooting. Yeah, so yeah, there's actually water in the tube. 
So Tim just um, blew out water out of it because there was more water. That's why it was still sub sputtering. And the water is, you know, of course, the tube is really, really long. Hold on. The tube is really, really long. So he has to blow it out of there. Okay, try it. I don't think there's any more in there. Okay, there's no more in there. But you could you could see that there's like water um, coming out of it. I don't feel the resistance oh. anymore. But yeah, so if um, if it's still sputtering, hey, come back inside. If it's still sputtering, that means that there's water all the way inside of the tube. So you want to make sure that you just, you know, take it out of this um, the stove and just blow water out of it. So now we're gonna try it to see if it's still sputtering. Also, before we turn it on, you want to make sure that it's really, really tight so there's no gas coming out and you don't want to burn your house. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the bottom of this. So this is what it looks like, the bottom. <coughs> We've been using this so much that there's like staining and stuff on the... Um... <laughs> but it doesn't affect how it works. Alright, let's see if it works. Oh, I gotta go. I gotta go plug it back in. <laughs> How about turn it off? Turn it off. It's still sputtery. It is? Yeah. Maybe there's more. <clears throat> okay, so right now we're trying to troubleshoot <laughs> troubleshoot our gas because what happens is when you turn it on. Let me use a nighter thing. When you turn it on, you can see that it's uh, there's fire. But then when you turn it on low, it turns off and it's not supposed to do that it's supposed to have fire on it so um, we're trying to figure out what's going on with it and we're thinking we're kind of troubleshooting it we're thinking it's because the sand is leaning towards the side of it so we want to make sure that the sand is up here so that we can see if that will work with it um, no. okay so now we've uh, moved the sand so you want to make sure that it's not leaning. So now it's even. It had been leaning on the side for a while because you could see that this is where the sand was leaning on. So you want to make sure that you kind of put it to the middle instead of the side. So it should be heavier now, pushing, pushing on top. Huh? On the top. Putting more pressure on the, on the tank. On the tank, yeah. That's what the sandbags are for. It puts pressure so that the gas will run through the hose. There's not much pressure there won't be much pressure going the towards stove. the stove that's why it's not on when it's, it's low it's so now it looks centered, pretty centered. so the sandbags are really heavy it's like what 40 pounds no more than that <laughs> but you want to be careful with it when you're when you're trying to pull it up because i mean there's metal things that are here. metal clips that are attached so and you know there's a blob of water in there you don't want that bursting out yep. which reminds me did you tighten the no, I haven't tightened them. But oh, okay. It's been getting cold and hot. So it's fine. But you want to make sure that you kind of tighten it up, though. Because we don't want no duty particles on our ground. I've been trying to troubleshoot this gas. Um, I mean, it still comes on, except that when it's on low, it's not on anymore, which is weird because it's supposed to stay on like the way it's doing it right now. And we're not quite sure why, when it's on low, it doesn't stay on. So sometimes when I'm cooking something and I put it on low, it actually turns off. And that's not a good thing to have because, well, you're not, you don't want it to stay on because then it's still using up gas. Um, so sometimes I find it, it's off already and it's still... Um, using up the gas. So anyways, we're trying to figure out why it's doing that. There are some troubleshooting here um, that they gave us in the manual. So I mean, it still has, uh, it's still burning. It's not like it's not burning anymore. So whatever it is that's happening, the reason why it's not um, on when it's low, we just have to figure that out. Maybe ask the company or something because we can't really find it on here. Okay, so aside from that, uh, we'll have to figure that out later on. But there are some main, uh, some yearly or six-month maintenance thing that you have to do. 
you will need to get this uh, biogas filter and it's just composed of activated carbon, needs to be replaced approximately every six months. Um, we've already had the system for over six months, um, but you could tell that you have to change it when the gas starts to smell, when you turn it on and you could smell something, uh, that's when you know you have to change it. So we're just gonna buy this right now. I mean, there's not any smell on it right now. So we'll just buy it because it takes a while to get here. But that is something that you would have to do um, yearly or every six months. Um, but that's about it. That's the only maintenance things that you really have to do. So